I grew up in that... Bedford, you go to Hardbrecht. No, Welcome wait, wait, wait. to Bedford. That's no. it, that's... Wait, wait, we're both saying Oh, that. okay, three, two, one. Welcome, Welcome to, to Fretford, Fretford, the heart of the Brecks. Here you can see the two rivers which flow through, through Fretford. The River Fet and the River Little Ooze. Hello, I'm Lilith. This is the river in Fetford, right there. Today we are thinking about 1889. Queen Victoria was on the throne. Fetford was a small town with farms nearby and lots of people worked for Charles Barrow Works. For fun, people came to swim in, swim in this river, but a boy drowned here. So Fetford Council decided to build an outdoor swimming pool. In part of the river it opened it opened in 1890 you had to pay to swim there so people still swam in other parts of the river but many men swam with no swimming costumes on this mean meant that girls and women could not swim in the river too bathers should behave decently so the council passed a law in 1909 that said if you wanted to swim in the river you had to, to wear a swimming costume In 1914 to 1918, World War One happened. Many people went to fight. They came back to find no jobs. So the council got some of those people to come to Thetford to make the swimming pool better. Let's go and see it, come on. The workers put in this concrete, a diving board there, and huts there. In 1922, the new swimming pool or swimming baths opened to the world. It was lovely. Um, it was very deep in those days. Um, there was a shallow end, 50 yards long. I'm not certain of the length now. Going upstream towards Bury St Edmunds, it got deeper and deeper and deeper. And at the far end was a, a three-stage diving board and a springboard. Um, but the bottom was very, very muddy. And if you were the first one in that day, the water was lovely and clear. But if you had to follow that, there was mud everywhere. At the age of about six or seven, you went down to the local swimming pools at the Three Nuns Bridges on the side of the river, and. I learned the man's name today, Stooshy was his nickname, he also used to work at the sewage works. Um, he was the man who used to collect, I believe it was sixpence to go in to actually swim in the river. And then there was a row of wooden huts where you had the girls huts, a multiple change hut where girls and boys could change and then the men's huts at the other end where the diving board and everything was. That was during the summer but uh... That was still cold. Once you got in the water, that was all right. You used to let somebody else go in first and let you know what it was like. Uh, but the, on the other side of the river, it was very, very sandy. 
It was rather like the beach. In those days, you could you could get down there, and a lot of families would picnic in that area, and then slip across through the sand and go into the bathing sheds for, for nothing. Local schools used this pool to teach swimming. In the 1920s, a girl from the girls' grammar school said they learned about water safety here. There. In 1937, there was a swimming competition right where I'm standing. The schools involved were Norwich Ridge School and the Boys and Girls Grammar School. In the 1940s, Doris remembered it had a solid base, but if one dived too deep, it stirred up in mud. I remember one boy coming up with an eel, but people still swam in other parts of the river because it was free. When I got my bicycle and, I, and other friends up, we used to then go down to a place like Two Mile Bottom and Second Stance, different places, and uh, any part of the river where we could get to, really. We were in it, sort of two or three miles of Thetford. Over the common, we used to go there seven days a week. Yeah. Yeah, all during the summer holidays. Get a jacket potato from heated up at the gas works, take it down with us. We used to play on the common, go down the river swimming. Mum come home when Mum said tea was ready at five o'clock and you used to be there. There was another place to swim in the river, but you was on your own up there. There's usually three or four of you went because that was very deep there. You had a big rope hang out of the tree and you could swing out into the river and drop yourself in. They put a, an old railway sleeper, made a diving board out of that, and then the other side used to be a tree when they hung a rope and uh, then you used to swing across. And that was lovely. It was the bridge from the bridge outwards for a while was very stony and shallow and then it went down to a, a hole where it was all sand where you could swim. And people used to, and not me, but they used to dive off that bridge and that was very scary. First memories are in the um, bridge tavern. Um, my father was away during the war and my mother used to take me and my sister up there swimming and paddling. During the school holidays that's where everybody went. The whole families took their picnics and spent the whole day that was just good fun to go and be able to go down the river and a lot of your mates you'd all meet down there and yeah but uh, that was part of the growing up in Thetford because that was a very small town at the time and everybody knew everybody else. And on a winter's day when there was snow and they used to let this stuff out, um, peas, peas, beans, the smell was strong and we used to paddle in this culvert and it was really hot so you warmed your feet up but then by the time you got dressed again your feet were frozen. Maybe six or seven foot from the pipe would come out and that would be green with peas. Yeah, or well, that would be nice coloured red with strawberries and the river looked like somebody had been killed, I looked like blood running down the river. The colour, the, the water would be all coloured depending what they were canning that day. It was beetroot that would be red and it's <laughs> peas that would be green. From 1959, hundreds of people came to came from London to live in Thetford. They were surprised to see a swimming pool in the river. One Thetfordian remembered the Londoners didn't go in there. They thought there were a load of hillbillies. So people raised money to build an out indoor swimming pool. It opened in 1972.
but I used to go fishing with my cousin in the mill head that was quite good there used to be one or two pipe roam about in there you could catch a half tidy fish in there and under the town bridge was good for fishing for perch. Um, there used to be a lot of chub near the iron bridges an older lady who lived in St Giles's Lane would always give you sixpence for a half decent sized fish to feed her cat on The Iron Bridges, it was always nice and shallow but very clear water because it ran very fast and there was abundance of little tiddlers and we would go down with our jam jars on a piece of string round and you'd got in the stream and you'd wait for a tiddler to come and, and pull it out and <laughs> take it home but the poor things never survived. <laughs> paint and pulpware baby bath. This is the raw pulp. Pulp is made from paper and jute. It is strong and very light. Baby baths were painted in a range of nursery colours. Barbara remembered, our son's baby bath was cream on the inside and green on the outside in 1974. Our then five-year-old eldest son had wanted to know what would and what would not hold his weight in the water we tested so we tested the baby bath in the little ooze on <laughs> Barnum Common a lovely spot where we also used to paddle and swim if he sat perfectly still it did just about float we used to get what are called belly tanks they were the drop tanks off an aircraft and you could chop a hole in the top smacking your fingers a few times as <laughs> I can remember and you used a piece of what, four by two wood across the top and got two five gallon drums each side and made it into a boat and you could then go out on the river. Put a bit of board across, join two together mm -hmm. and then go down the river on it. You had to carry them out over the first one then carry on till down the second stance. Didn't you just go any further than that. Just, yeah that was like a Sunday afternoon join. The boat race happened here. The boat race happened on Saturday the 21st of May 1932. The people who were taking part in the boat race were Mr William Bonnet and Mr Arthur Mason. So they both John. built their own homemade boats and then they raced across the river. Basically, like from there to from, there. Yeah, from that side to that side. They were both both postmen, and they. Yeah. I think it was like 20 cigarettes that yeah. whoever lost had to give it to the winner. So then they decided that they'd challenge each other, but the first time one of their boats exploded. The second time, the same person's boat had exploded, turned around and left. And then the but third he still time, wouldn't give up. So around. he decided that he'd do it for a third time. So he goes right up, and it just. Spins around multiple times. Yeah. Well. Oh yeah, there were like 200 people yeah, literally and then, just came to watch a boat go ahead and turn around. I think, I think there might have been like a few other people taking part in like the third race. I can't really so remember. Literally 200 people came just to watch your boat turn around and leave, and then 300 people came to watch your boat just start spinning around in circles and then leave again. Yes. 